Hi everyone, my name is Faye, welcome to my channel and today we are going to be talking about the case of Fanny Adams. Fanny was an eight year old girl who was born on the 30th of April 1859 in a town called Alton and I have actually gone to visit this town and where it was all, where everything happened which was really interesting to see as to where and how far each bit was apart and how far the murderer would have had to have gone to get to her um, and so I'm really excited to just share that all with you. Oldham was never known to have many murders going on and so parents were quite happy for their children to go out and play um, and not be too worried about it. They'd go out quite until quite late and then come home for their dinner. On this particular day, the 24th of August 1867, Fanny happened to be out playing with her sister Lizzie and her best friend Minnie. Just in the hot fields close to by where they lived and honestly it really wasn't that far it was possibly about two minute walk from where they lived whilst they were out playing a man actually approached them and offered them all money he offered lizzie and minnie about three and a half pence to go basically just go away um which he later describes as going to buy some sweets and offered fanny like a half a, a tuppence or half a pence to go with him to escort him somewhere um, and this man was called Frederick. He, Frederick Baker, he was very well dressed, he worked as a solicitor's clerk and, you know, very well presented so the girls didn't really see an issue with this. So the two girls, Lizzie and Minnie, went off with their money and I'm not sure, it doesn't really tell you what happens with those two. However, Fanny accepted the money and refused to go with Frederick, which is completely fair enough. Upon hearing this, Frederick wasn't very impressed and basically picked Fanny up and took her into the hot field close by. The two other girls never really questioned what happened with Fanny because again it was a very well respected place, the man was very well presented and they had assumed she'd just gone home. So when they returned home at five o'clock and their neighbour Mrs Gardner asked where Fanny had gone, they explained everything and she obviously became very worried. Mrs Gardner then went and explained everything with the two girls to Mrs Adams, all then went out to search for Fanny. Whilst they were walking towards where the girls were playing, they were approached by a man who happened to be Frederick Baker. And when Mrs Gardner asked him, what have you done with the child? He replied, nothing. He maintained himself very well. Again, he was very smartly dressed, so they believed him and they trusted him. Um, they thought nothing of it. They thought this man could not do something like that. You know, look at him. Um, they, he then explained to them that he was a clerk of solicitor's office for William Clement, but also accepted the fact that he had given them money um, to buy sweets, which he often does to children. However, the girls had never seen this guy before because they'd never told their parents about this before. And so it was a bit odd to them. At six o'clock, Frederick returned back to his work and saw his colleague who he told about his running with Miss Adams and Mrs. Gardner. The colleague explained that he seemed very disturbed and said it will be very awkward for me if the child is found murdered. After this discussion, they then went for a drink at a close by pub and Frederick told his colleague that, you know, on Monday I might leave town to find a new job, but also sort of said that he might find it hard to find a job and said I could always go as a butcher. So whilst Frederick was out for this drink with his colleague it was getting later and later and people still hadn't heard from Fanny or found her and so the neighbours along with Mrs Adams and Mrs Gardner went to go and search and do a wider search for Fanny. They sent out like a big search party all across all the hot fields and the rivers and so hopefully they would find something. Upon looking, someone did find um, Fanny's sever severed head um, with the eyes gorged out. She had a big slit in her, in her face from her mouth to her ears, I guess like a big smile. And also her right ear was cut off. Along with all of those facial things, her leg and thigh were found nearby. Um, and upon searching further, they also found her torso with the entire contents of her chest and pelvis torn out and scattered. 
some of her internal organs were also slashed and just ripped apart um, and her eyes were actually found at the end of the end of the river way and as i explained earlier when i went to visit um the river way sort of it's quite long and it ha just has like a finishing point not far from where they were it's sort of in between where the murder happened and the solicitor's office and it sort of stops in front of a house which is quite creepy because the house is quite old so i'm assuming it's been there since this all happened upon finding out the news mrs adams runs to tell her husband who's south town like south town and um, playing cricket with his friends and while she's running to go and do this she collapses from ex exhaustion and grief george adams obviously finds out and hears about all the news hears about his wife hears about his daughter and heads home to collect his shotgun and search for the murderer luckily for both of them he was actually disarmed by his neighbors because i mean i can see why he'd want to kill kill the murderer he's just killed his daughter and um, but he'd just be just as bad and probably would have had the same punishment when the police found out about everything they went to see the only suspect they had the main suspect which was frederick and they actually arrested him frederick just said i know nothing of it and william cheney cheney who was the police officer at the time um escorted him through a huge huge crowd of angry people to Alton police station upon questioning him at the police station frederick's wristbands of his shirt and his trousers were all spotted with blood which i find a bit weird because honestly when you're dismembering someone that much have you only just got a few spots like what did he do what did he cover himself up with did he take spare clothes and um, however they only found a few spots on there and also his trouser legs boots and socks were soaked through upon being questioned about his wet socks and boots and the blood splattering his only explanation was that he liked to step in puddles when he went out for walks bearing in mind it's mid-august you know it's quite warm there's not likely to be puddles around and the only way you're really going to step in a puddle or something wet is if you go into the river and explain said to them that won't hang me will it and you know it's just, just a bit weird if you're not a, if you're not guilty of it why would you say that although he explained where the water could have come from he never actually explained the blood not once said a word about it witnesses from his work then also confirmed that he left work around 1 p.m which lines up with him meeting the girls at 1 30 um, and didn't return to, to work until 3 25 now i went when i went to go and see this place you can't really see where the murder took place because we don't have hot fields anymore however you can see where the fields are that, that it all happened you just you know you can't place where it is um the other thing we also saw was the solicitor's office which happens to also still be a solicitor's office just a different company now he must have known where he was going and where these girls played because it's about a 15 minute walk from his office to the fields which i just think is a bit weird like he must have known that they'd be there that's somewhere they always played and he obviously just knew what he was doing the witnesses also then confirmed that he went out again at 5 30 which is when he would have bumped into mrs adams and mrs gardner and um, which suggests that he first went out and killed her murdered her dismembered her uh when he first went out and then returned to the body for a second time after questioning uh frederick they then searched him and actually found two small knives which is the weapons they described would have probably been used for this frederick was obviously kept um in custody and on the following monday they found his diary his diary entry read for that day saturday august 24th i killed a young girl it was fine and hot so not only has he just given himself in he's explained in his diary that he did it he then goes on to talk about the weather which i just think is crazy like what has got to go in your on in your mind to think about the weather after telling well not telling someone but after writing down that you'd killed someone 
when this came up in his trial frederick just said that he was drunk and he wrote that meaning that he just was aware that a young girl had been murdered whilst all of this was going on a local painter had found a large stone in the hop fields where fanny was found the stone had lots of blood on it a long hair and a piece of flesh attached to it dr leslie said this would have been used as the murder weapon and that her cause of death was being hit over the head with a large weapon so after reviewing all the gruesome details of this murder seeing all the different body parts and hearing all the different parts of the story deputy robert hartfield asked frederick if he had anything to say and the only thing frederick had to say was that he was innocent the jury returned and said the jury returned with a verdict of willful murder against frederick baker killing and slaying fanny adam he was then remanded to winchester prison to await the formal hearing the hearing was then held at alton town hall on thursday the 29th of august at this time he was still protesting his innocence and he was committed for trial whilst removing him from town hall police had real difficulty removing him without him being attacked and assaulted because there was just a huge mob of people outside really really angry minnie warner who was fanny's best friend carried into court to testify against frederick baker the defense really challenged her identification of baker could this be real how could she remember she was so young is she sure this is who she saw it also claimed that it was impossible for frederick to have killed fanny with two small knives but they also tried to claim insanity and um, because he had quite a history a family history hereditary insanity and so they tried to play on that quite a bit his so frederick's father had shown an in inclination to assault to assault and even kill his own children and um, one of his cousins had been in asylums four times his sister actually died from a brain fever and frederick himself had attempted suicide after an abortive love love affair the the jury were really unimpressed with the case that the defense was building for for frederick and they just weren't having it at all the defense tried to get them to you know he get them to see that he was not accountable for his actions because of insanity and they just were not having it at all the jury went away and they were only gone for 15 minutes so they were really quick they knew that this guy was guilty and that they did not want him walking the same streets as them and they returned with a guilty verdict after the court hearing frederick baker was hanged on the 24th of december so christmas eve of the same year in 1867 there was a huge crowd to come and watch come and watch frederick be, be hanged there was 5000 people there most of who consisted who consisted of women women and this had happened in front of winchester's county prison at 8 a.m following his execution it actually came to light that frederick had written a letter to fanny's parents he wanted to express his deep sorrow and said in an unguarded hour i'm just gonna have to read this because it's quite hard in an unguarded hour and not with malice afterthought he earnestly sought their forgiveness adding that he enraged at her crying but it was done without any pain or struggle frederick then claimed in his letters that he hadn't violated the child um, and he hadn't attempted to do so either fanny's headstone actually lies in alton cemetery i went to visit it and it's a beautiful headstone it was renovated a few years ago by a public subscription and it's honestly it's beautiful it's been well kept there's flowers there it's really lovely to see I went to go and see everything in place i obviously went to go and visit fanny's grave and it's beautiful it's lovely it's all clean it's fresh it's been renewed and it lies with flowers and all sorts the only thing i found very odd is that there's no one buried near her there's a few in front of her but the big patch of grass 
with no one there either side of her she's just by herself i believe her parents were actually buried in kingston and um, i'm not sure why that is i couldn't really find much on it and i couldn't really find much on why she's buried alone either and um, so if any of you find that out i'd love to know in the comments below and um, but I hope you enjoyed this story and I can't wait to bring you more. I really love researching into these things and trying to understand the mindset of the murderers and also the mindset of how the victims' families would have felt. I will link all of my socials down below and I would love if you could subscribe, give, give this a little like and let me know in the comments below which other stories you'd love me to look into. I'm also going to try and do local stories so that I can go and visit them because I like going to see them and explaining to you guys all the different places like how close things were together and whereabouts they were or the different feelings I felt when I went there and yeah so I will see you next time bye